fourth grade mathematicians. It's Mr. Tang here, welcoming you back for a new week of math here on BCPS TV. Our lessons for this week focus on a three read strategy to help us with problem solving. Luckily for all of you, one of my good friends, the amazing Miss Hilberg, joins us as we dive deeper into lesson one for the week of June 8th to June 12th. Take it away, Miss Hilberg. Today we will make sense of problems by using the three read strategy to solve real world problems involving area and perimeter. The three read strategy involves five steps to help you make sense of and solve problems. Step one, read to make sense. Step two, read for details. Step three, read to represent. Step four, solve the problem. Step five, check your work. This organizer can be used to help you organize your thinking. Our first step is to read to make sense. As I read the problem, think about these questions. What is happening in the problem? How would you describe it in your own words? And what questions do you still have about the problem? Ginny wants the new library to have a large bulletin board in the entrance to display upcoming library events. The bulletin board measures something. She wants to determine how many square feet of paper will be needed to cover the bulletin board and how many feet of border will be needed to put a border around the edge of the bulletin board. Now that I've read the problem, I know Jenny wants to build a large bulletin board in the entrance. She wants to find out how many square feet of paper will cover the bulletin board. And she also wants to figure out how many feet of border will go around the edge of the bulletin board. In my organizer, I'm going to draw a quick sketch to show what I'm visualizing. I see a bulletin board that is covered in paper and also has a border. It has dimensions, but I don't know what they are yet. Next, we are going to read for details. We need to think about what the numbers represent. We also need to think about the problem structure so we can think about what mathematics we might use to solve the problem. We can look for vocabulary or important information that's shown in graphs or charts. As you reread, you can put a star next to parts of the problem that you understand or have information that's important for solving the problem. You could use a question mark to note any parts of the problem that you're confused about or have questions about. As I reread, look for the important details. Ginny wants the new library to have a large bulletin board in the entrance to display upcoming library events. The bulletin board measures eight feet long by four feet wide. She wants to determine how many square feet of paper will be needed to cover the bulletin board and how many feet of border will be needed to put a border around the edge of the bulletin board. What details did you find? We now know the dimensions of the bulletin board. It will be eight feet long by four feet wide. I also know that Ginny wants to know how many square feet will cover the bulletin board. When I want to cover a space, I need to know the area of the space. And it is measured in square units, like square feet. Ginny also wants to know how many feet will go around the edge of the bulletin board. When I want to measure the distance around a space, I am looking for the perimeter, which is measured in units, like feet. Now I know the dimensions of my bulletin board. It will be eight feet by four feet. I want to find the area, which is the space inside, and I want to find the perimeter, which is the distance around the space. Now we are going to read to represent. You can use a drawing or equation to represent the problem. 
You can think about what operation might be used to solve the problem and what you know about that operation. As you're creating your representation, make sure to label important information. As I read the problem, think about how you might represent it. Ginny wants the new library to have a large bulletin board in the entrance to display upcoming library events. The bulletin board measures eight feet long by four feet wide. She wants to determine how many square feet of paper will be needed to cover the bulletin board and how many feet of border will be needed to put a border around the edge of the bulletin board. So to find how many square feet of paper are needed to cover the bulletin board, I need to calculate the area. I can represent that with the equation area is equal to length times width. To find how many feet of border are needed to create a border around the edge of the bulletin board, I need to calculate perimeter. I can use the equation or formula perimeter, where P is equal to length plus width plus length plus width. Because to find the perimeter, I need to add all of the side lengths. Step four is to solve the problem. We can use our representation as we solve the problem. It is important that we are accurate and precise. We need to make sure we complete all parts of the problem. We should include equations or expressions and show our work when we are asked. And it is important that we use accurate math vocabulary symbols and numbers when we are solving the problem. After solving, you can write an answer statement to show your final answer. This problem really has two parts because I need to find the area and the perimeter of the bulletin board. I'm going to solve to find the area first. I know area is equal to length times width. The length of the bulletin board is eight feet, I'm gonna multiply that by the width, which is four feet. I can multiply eight times four, and that is equal to 32 square feet. So the area of the bulletin board is 32 square feet. Next, I will find the perimeter. When I find the perimeter, I add all of the side lengths. So the perimeter is equal to length plus width plus length plus width. Our length is eight feet, our width is four feet, and then we'll add them again to account for the other two sides. I know eight plus four is 12, eight plus four is 12, and 12 plus 12 is 24. So our perimeter is 24 feet. So Jenny will need 32 square feet of paper and 24 feet of border for her bulletin board. Our final step is to check our work. We can reread the problem and our answer to make sure that we used information from the problem to solve, that our answer makes sense, and that we answered all parts of the problem. The problem included two parts and I answered both by finding the area and perimeter of the bulletin board. I can use estimation to check the reasonableness of my answer or another strategy. For area, I can think of 10 times 4 because 10 is close to 8. 10 times 4 is 40, which is close to my answer of 32 square feet, so that is reasonable. To check the answer I got for the perimeter, I'm going to use a different formula. You can also find perimeter using the formula 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. When I use this formula, I also get 24 feet, so that is a reasonable answer. That was awesome, Ms. Hilberg. I can safely say I feel like I learned something today. Well, boys and girls, now it's your turn. 
In the Triad section in your Schoology page, you'll be prompted to complete an assignment that your teacher should have assigned to you. There, you will find similar questions to those that we reviewed today. For these questions, you can use your finger or touchpad to draw inside the box to show your mathematical thinking. Be sure to take your time, read all your directions carefully, and show all your work. When you're feeling confident and ready, move on to the formative assessment portion of the lesson found in the Show What You Know section in Schoology. This will prompt you to complete the next assignment that your teacher should have assigned to you. Read the directions and prompts carefully, maybe even a minimum of three times. Hint, hint. Take your time and make sure you show all your work. Well, boys and girls, that's it from us for this week. And on behalf of your friends here at BCPS Math, we want you to know that you are so loved, that you are so important, and that you hold the future in your hands. So stay safe, be kind, and do the math.